Jesus pose. Hi, you with Julian on the brown note, and I'm going to do a review of. I'm reviewing everything, and I'm doing loads of political pieces at the moment because I'm going away for three weeks, so trying to clear the decks. And I had a couple of weeks where I didn't do any posting, so it's just going to be a nightmare. Jockstrap, the UK duo, much heralded, just released their debut album. Um, Georgia Ellery and Taylor Sky, a boy and a girl. The girl does the singing and I guess the songwriting and lyricism and the guy does the production and the textures and she is a member of Black Country New Road. And given her voice, is it such a far-fetched thing that she could become their lead singer? Black Country New Road lost their iconic singer uh, who's looking after their mental health um, after releasing my favourite album of the year. Um, so George Strap have been really heralded over a couple of EPs as being this, you know, post-Sophie sort of kaleidoscope of modern contemporary music. <clears throat> and they finally released, they're both from um, art school in London, uh, which is kind of, you know, I, I left school at 16. I don't have any qualifications at all. I'm sure you didn't need to know that. I'm sure you could have guessed. But there's a lot of um, famous music acts from Roxy Music to The Clash that have gone through this sort of art school, middle class London background. Um, so they released their first EP, Love is Key to the City in 2018 and Wicked City in 2020. And this is a full blown album. I love you, Jennifer B. Thank you, Samsung. Go to hell. Um, this is one of the most acclaimed albums so far this year. So if I sound a little grouchy, it's only in, in comparison to the fact that it has universal acclaim. Um, I thought it started, uh, the first track, Neon, very sort of post-trip-hop folktronica. And then it goes into, and she's got a real pretty voice as well. Um, her, sing, her singing voice is continually the probable highlight of this album for me and it references other singing voices I really like um, that first track then explodes into you know louder guitars and everything it's just not that much substance to it um, a few of the tracks don't have the songwriting or I guess the substance to be outside of being experimental uh, track 2 Jennifer B the title track de facto um, there are a lot of um, reference points on this album to other artists um, and it does feel like, um, this is going to sound really patronising, but it does feel like a teenager trying on the <laughs> different outfits and that isn't to disparage what is a very good album. Um, it feels like they're trying on other people's clothes a lot. Um, the second track really, I, I think Purity Ring, I think they were a Canadian duo. When they, I don't know how, was it 10 years ago? They came out with their debut album and I raved about it. And since then, there's so many female vocal acts that engage in electronica that have used a similar template to what Purity Ring did. I thought that was a pretty amazing and very influential album. Uh, lots and lots of um, female vocal acts since I have thought it's got a bit of that first Purity Ring album. The other one is that, like both Purity Ring and Julia Holter can do this very clean vocal, very pristine vocal, even Mitski as well, where they've got these strong, pure voices. And I really like that kind of vocalization, to be honest. The groove though is Pure Grimes, another hat that they're putting on. It's a good track. I'm not sure about the songwriting at this stage, but um, Greatest Hits comes on. And for the first time, and not the last time, I'm kind of referencing Lana Del Rey and NFR, one of my favorite albums of the century. And the track, The Greatest, on that album was heralded as the best. It was probably about my fifth or sixth favorite on that album, to be honest. Um, but it's got this really skyscraping chorus, absolutely amazing, and much more of a song as well. Um, what's it all about for is um, one of the tropes of the album is that they surprisingly go in for this sort of wistful 60s 
post Nico folk music, um, which is, is is good, but it's not something that other artists haven't done a lot of. It's another good song, and there are times when I feel like the song is a vehicle for production flourishes from the guy. Um, but here, um, I thought that the the production complemented everything that was going on really well. Again, NFR came up in the standout track for me, Concrete Over the Water. Um, that or the greatest uh, greatest hits are probably the two best tracks. Um, it's got a superb change in it as well. And definitely the time I thought of Sophie. Uh, a lot, another hugely influential artist, no longer with us. Um, died a couple of years ago. And uh, I definitely felt that Concrete Over Water goes through multiple stages. Very ambitious track. It's up and down from there. Like I thought, Deborah, the six, uh, Ank, sorry, the six track was a bit inconsequential. And at the end of the track, it's got this quite chopped up, annoying vocal processing, which I didn't think brought anything to the party. Um, Deborah, I thought, brought in some MIA, Rosalia, um, bit of almost Eastern Europe, or maybe even like Middle Eastern uh, feel to it, which I liked. Uh, a lot of people have. Like I saw the Pitchfork review and they, they singled out Glasgow as saying that these people were, this band is so analogous to being a, you know, a festival winning over band with the track Glasgow. And it's anthemic, but it's a little bit ordinary. It wasn't one of my favourite tracks. It's a bit obvious. The lyrics are a bit trite. Um, I thought the following track, uh, Lancaster Court, did I live in Lancaster Court? Anyway, um, had some really nice uh, percussion, like some big um, warped percussion sounds that came in at um, different moments throughout the track which I thought was really good uh, and it ends on 50-50 extended mix which I did find a bit grating so I apologise if I'm not being overwhelmingly effusive in my praise I think compared to certain other albums I'm hoping to review the Alex Sandy G album which is another one that is a, like a miasma of um, a lot of different kinds of music in a kaleidoscope sort of style. But I think I find that one quite compelling. And I think that here I don't always, I'm not, I'm not compelled all the way through. Um, there's certainly an awful lot of good tracks. I thought that uh, Concrete Over Water and Greatest Hits are two of the best tracks I've heard this year. Um, I thought there was some hanging around waiting for, you know, the production motives. There's not a lot, even though they're, they're, they're classed as being super original, there's not a lot that isn't actually sounds that I've heard on other people's records. Um, so, you know, you listen to something like Motomami from uh, Rosalia. That was wild. Like, the experimentation on that was wild. Here it is more like a collage of stuff that I've heard already over the last 10 years. Um, so, um, and the songwriting as well, like look at something like NFR, it's like the, the songwriting itself is occasionally really good and occasionally uh, a little bit forgettable. So overall it is, it is a really good album for a debut album and it does make me want to hear more of what they're going to do. It's not one of the year's best albums for me and I think that the um, level of praise it's got is again, <laughs> music critics, movie critics, they are sheep and they just see something get huge praise and they were expecting this to get huge praise. Even saying that, I'm still going to give Jockstrap uh, I Love You Jennifer B a very strong 8 out of 10.